And shaitan did not come to Adam salam and tell him once. This lie went on for several years. For several years he repeated this to Adam salam. So in a moment of forgetfulness, he made the mistake. Now remember also, if you tell a lie long enough, if you tell a lie frequently enough, it begins to sound like the truth. And that's what is in our world today. That's what the politicians lie use. They tell you something again and again and again. They tell you in Facebook. They tell you in Twitter. They tell you on Google. And finally, we accept it. So the same thing is happening to us. Also remember, years before this event, Allah said to the angels, I will send onto the earth my Khalifa. So this was on the cards a long time ago. What is a Khalifa? A Khalifa is not a light, a light word. It is my substitute my replacement, someone who can stand in for me, someone who is excellent. So this wasn't a, a mistake on Adam salam's part. He was ordained by Allah to be his vicegerent on this earth a long time ago before that action. And also the other thing I want to say is, you know, we look at it and we look for faults. We want to attach blame. Whose fault is it? But in doing this, we forget the message that is trying to be taught to us. This is not a criticism, it's a criticism of you. This is all of us. We look for a scapegoat. But what is Allah teaching us here? Allah is teaching us that if you repeat something again and again to someone, even if it's an untruth, it begins to be true. The other thing that shaitan used is he realized that to influence Adam alayhi salam, he has to come into his inner circle. And so he said to Adam alayhi salam, I am your sincere advisor. And he said this for years. Finally, my sincere advisor is advising me. So you see, when we hear a thing once, we read it once, we see it on the screen, we should not just be gullible. We should look at it critically. We should get second and third opinions. And ultimately, it should be on the wait and see list, not on one that I embrace list. Any other thing that I should make clear? Uh, I have a question. Like, if anybody, like you say, like politicians, they make promises, but they don't keep. But if anybody makes promises to anyone, but he forgets the promise, okay, for somehow, you know, and the, the person who promised to do anything, and but he, he did not remind him our promises. So if he forgets, like he never remembers the promises, does that count as a lie? I think we are, we, we do forget. Insan is forgetful. And if you sincerely forget, if it's definitely forgetfulness, I owe you a hundred dollars and I really forgot about it, that's a different situation. But there are two parties here. The one is the party that has been promised and the other party is the forgetful party. Both parties should play their part. The person who remembers, the person who is owed the hundred dollars should tell him, my dear brother, please settle this debt because we are going to meet on the next side of this equation and we want to clear our accounts. This is sincere advice to your brother. We're going to meet again, so let's clear these accounts. Let's make sure there's nothing between us. And when we meet each other at Eid greeting, we should embrace with affection. We shouldn't remember, he owes me hundred dollars. You see, both parties must play their part. It's not I should wait for you. If I know something, I should be forward, I should be front with you. That's the way you are leveling the playing field and facilitating your brother and yourself getting to Jannah. And our children are watching us. Every of these encounters include your children. 
Let them see how you handle situations. It's very important. We should not say, you belong there. He should see frontline how I am dispensing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's advice. That is teaching that he will never forget. You see, I want an A plus from him. And that's all I'm worried about communicating with him. No, the communication should be, here's how we implement Rasulullah's advice. That's more powerful than an A. But incidentally, it will result in an A as well. You know, I've, I've seen some psychologists call it a disease. A person who just habitually lies. Like someone who just doesn't need to shoplift. But he shoplifts. It's the thrill that goes with it. I'm, I, I, I was able to shoplift with all that surveillance cameras there. It's a great thrill, thrill. And everybody wants to experience that thrill. It's a sort of a disease. And I've heard psychologists call this a disease as well. The ability to misconceive of the situation. I fooled you. But until we realize that a surveillance system cannot be fooled, and this is the message we should be repeating to ourselves. I can fool every human being. I can fool the king of Saudi Arabia. But I cannot fool Allah. And until we have this sort of level discussion with our children and grandchildren, and they come and remind me, then I've learned. So we should be, this is the message that we should be propagating. Anything I am doing, I am not doing out of fear of Jack, that gentleman or that police. I am doing it out of fear and love for Allah. That is the cure for that sort of malady, that sort of illness, that sort of compulsion to lie. But the average person and Google will give you the details of how many people were interviewed. They do 10 minute interviews with people and they just ask them questions about themselves that they know. They know where I was born, they know who I'm married to, they know how many children I have, they virtually know my salary and they ask me questions. And in a 10-minute conversation, the person lies three times. He will explode things. I don't own two cars, I own four. Just to show himself to be further advanced than the world believes. And he has got no reason to lie. But it's just that emotional massage to stimulate the conversation further. And the average person is lying three times every 10 minutes in a conversation. Now, I'm not saying we are doing it here, but it's the average person that they interview. But it's, it, it's, it's felt to be a disease. I, 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 uh, this, this topic about Adam alayhi salam and Hawa and the original <coughs> sin is a topic that I've been invited to speak on at a church. So next month, inshallah, I will be talking at a church in Lansdale on this very topic. And that topic is the original sin committed by Adam alayhi salam. And of course, Islam does not accept the original sin. So that's the message to them. It won't be an easy message because they believe that unless you accept that sin and acknowledge that he died for your sin, Isa alayhi salam died for their sins, therefore they are safe, that's their belief structure. And until you tell them the truth, that's why I, I accepted their appointment. I said it's important for us to tell them that this is a fallacy. That Allah is powerful enough to forgive. He doesn't need any payback. And I want to remind them also that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah said, if the first of you, the last of you, the human of you, the jinn of you, were to assemble in one place and make a request of me, 
And were I to fulfill that request, that will not lower my treasury more than the level of the sea is lowered when you dip a needle into it and remove the needle. I want to tell them this. So Allah has this treasury of mercy, this treasury of wealth. He doesn't need anybody to die for him. So it's an opportunity to tell them this. And inshallah, may Allah give me the ability to impress them with these facts, which are not my opinion, but which are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's narrations and the holy book, the Quran, inshallah. We have a wonderful deen. We have this great deen. The problem is here. The deen is perfect. The problem is here. I want to thank you for the invitation uh, to think of us, to call us, and anything we can share. May Allah give us the ability to be pure in our, what we share and to remain humble. Yes. Sorry. So, when, when you say, even in jokes, we can apply, you know, there are like funny stories out there, like, you know, just to make people laugh. And you're not telling. Um, you know, trying to make people laugh um, by telling something of, for your, on your own, like, but there are like funny stories out there to make people laugh. Telling those stories are lies or, or not? No, no, I'm telling you a story. I'm telling you that I'm telling you a story. That's not a lie. I'm just going to tell you a story now to keep, keep the conversation going, to keep a, a, a good relationship I'm going to tell you a story. And Here's that, a joke. And that can be fun. So long as I preface it, it's a story. Jack and the Beanstalk. It's not really real. But I'm telling you a story about Jack and the Beanstalk. He climbed this tree. The tree grew overnight. And he climbed up here. And this is a story that I'm telling you. It's a fairy tale. The very fact that it's a fairy tale, it's a story that I'm telling you, that's a different situation. So it, it clearly distinguishes the difference. But always make it clear what we are doing. You know, we are going to get do this. Before I sell this car to you, I'm just telling you a story. And the story is about the replacing a tire, and this is what happened. But it's only a story, it's not. But we know when we are lying. We know when we are keeping facts in the shadows. We know this. When I am doing a business deal and I'm not telling you something, I know it. And I'll tell you I'm not lying, but I'm just keeping it in the shadows. And I know that Allah's surveillance system does not leave the weight of a mustard seed unfounded. Is it time for Salah?